That's Nick with Us versus Herd. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button and join the UVH fam. If you're not yet a member of our free options trading group, hit the link below. I post all my trades in there throughout the day, throughout the week, and we just have a great community. We have a great family of people um, that have come together and you know we just trade options together. So if that's you and you wanna join, hit the link. Um, today I wanna go over what the best ways to make money trading options on Robinhood. And I catch some flack for this, but because everyone everyone's very dedicated and loyal to Robinhood because I feel like it's their first investing experience or trading experience. It's the first place they ever made money, so you're very emotional and attached to it. But I'm just gonna be blunt. Um, Robinhood is not the best platform for trading options or stock or day trading or anything like that. I mean, it's, it's good for casual investors, but for for day trading and active traders, it's definitely not the best platform you need to, the best way to use Robinhood right now, if you want to like take advantage of the free commissions, is only use certain strategies and also pair it with another another platform, like I have Thinkorswim over here in the background. So, excuse me, I'm battling a little cold here. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so think yourself. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go into. I'm gonna use. Actually, I'm gonna use Alibaba for an example, just because they have dollar dollar wide strikes and it's pretty active. Um, so what I'm gonna be going over is just buying and selling a call and put. Like Robinhood works well when you just buy and sell a call and put. It doesn't really, you know, if you're just doing single naked. You know, if I just buy a put or a call, you know, it works well. And then certain strategies like advanced strategies like vertical vertical spreads. You know they tend to work fine, but Iron Condor is not not the greatest. So I'm gonna go. Out, I'm gonna go show you how to put those on and, and straddles and strangles as well, and the charting. So you know, starting with starting with the charting, like the best the best way. I know that I know that I know that Robinhood uh, app, the mobile version, does have candles right now, but they're only ten at ten increments. I like to use the 15, 15 minute increments. On the Robinhood app, it's only 10 minute increments and you can like customize this. So I definitely like the, I personally like to use the 15 minute candle because it gives me enough time to, you know, see if, if it basically slows me down, but also keeps me, keeps me in pace. So I, I prefer like after, after trading for so many years, I've settled in with the 15 minute candles mainly because I don't overreact. So like if the five minute and the one minute candles, people tend to overreact when there's some pullback, like on these like long candles up on here on the S and P's, you know, but for me personally, I like to use the 15 minute candle because it, it, it kind of it's just for my speed you know you can play with it but on robin hood on robin hood you can't really play with that so you know i definitely would pair it with uh think or swim or tasty works or e-trade or anyone that offers uh you know customizable charts so starting starting for there the other thing is like if i'm on the if i'm on the trade grid um it, you know robin hood traders they're new to trading options because robin hood just just offered this just this past year and they may not understand all these expirations and the best way to go on to there is if you go to let's just go to baba just to make it clear is you know there's there's a difference between monthly options and weekly options so weeklies are these dates right here monthly expirations are the ones that are not highlighted highlighted weeklies they expire every third friday of the month and right here robin hood doesn't show you that so the best way to find out what you know, if you're trading monthlies or weeklies, you know, for Alibaba, it doesn't really matter because it's very liquid. Apple doesn't matter. It's very liquid. But if you're trading other stocks that aren't very liquid, like Tilray or Cron or any of those weed stocks, it's pretty important to know because there's different liquidity and volume on these options than there are on on um, on the different dates have different liquidity. So like monthlies tend to be more active and weeklies tend to be less active for for stocks that are low vo or for options that are low volume or stocks that have low volume option interest. Um, so, you know, the best way I find if you just want to buy a call from, from, from Robinhood, all you have to do is hit this, you know, you go to buy, hit call up here, and then you select the price that you want to pay. So let's say if I want these 150 calls, you know, pretty much got to hit this and you're good to go. Very simple. Same for a put, you know, you just go in, hit continue, you load in one. Now just be, just be aware this, this right here is the, the limit price right here. The low price is the bid, the high price is the ask, and it's automatically adjusting you at the at the mid price. 
and you may not get a fill here because this is six cent wide so you may have to adjust this so you know a lot of people that that put orders in just because the order went in through robin hood doesn't mean it filled so like you would have to put in let's say right right now it's suggesting a dollar 30 if you put in a dollar 30 and you don't get filled you may actually have to go to like dollar 31 if, if you're buying options you want to get closer to you want to get closer to the ask or dollar 32 so if you don't get filled right away, you kind of have to play with it, and you know, depending on how bad you want it, like I wouldn't go too crazy. Like right now, the bet, the bid and the ask aren't too wide, but some stocks, you know, the bid and the ask are like super, super wide, like you know, fifty cents and stuff like that. And that's why I typically don't trade. I typically don't trade low volume options because because the bid and the ask, and you, there's a lot of ways that you can get screwed. Um, for picking for picking a option price. You know, Robinhood doesn't do a good job of telling you what the expected move is. And once again, pair this with another platform, uh, TD Ameri uh, Thinkorswim or Tastyworks. And how to determine the expected move? Right here in the upper right-hand corner on each of these dates here, you'll see a plus or minus and then a number. So it's plus or minus 540 for this date for November 16th. It's plus or minus $8.15 for November 23rd, plus or minus $11. So what this means, Right now, Alibaba stock price is trading at $1.49, uh, 149 excuse me. It's saying by expiration, it's expected for this week, November 16th, which we have here, it's expected to move $5.40. So a lot of times when you're buying and selling options, you want to be within the expected move, especially when you're buying options, you want to be within the expected move. So, and then you can kind of determine if you're, if you're getting a good deal, you know, if the expected move here is $5, it's currently at dollar 149 you know be wary of the ones that are like 157.50 because the expected move yes yes stocks do go beyond the expected move but you also want to be in range of probabilities and what the market is expecting for that expected move yes you can make some more money but, but down in here but like it's not likely for it if the expected move is five dollars and it's for it to go to 170 it's very unlikely and you're just gonna be throwing your money away buying these like four cent five cent options you know it's a lot better to buy options that are way closer into the money here you know so yes it's more expensive but your chances of it of it being profitable profitable are are greater and also you're not going to just be throwing away like if you if you bought these nine dollar nine dollar or nine cents really nine dollar um calls here and you do that 10 times and all they all expired to zero you'd be throwing away a hundred dollars versus putting up $60 up front, $67 here up front for these 152.50s and it going and making $60 more consistently. So like when you're trading options, it's all about win rate and probabilities and making sure that your win rate is more than your losing rate. You know, it's great to be, it's great to have huge wins, you know, to have a 500 or a thousand percent winner. Yes, that's great, but that shouldn't be the goal. Like for me, my goal is a hundred percent, um, for buying options, you know, 100 to 200 percent is is my goals, and I I really 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 narrow in on my win rate versus trying to you know buy these like lotto one cent plays that you know over time like if you buy one here and there it doesn't really matter but it doesn't really matter but over the course of a year you do it a hundred times two hundred times it really adds up to you know you may look at your you may look at your trade history or your or your, or your taxes and you'll be like hey I spent a thousand dollars on needless options that just expired to zero so you know be very very wary of that you know so you know when when buying options like for me i would i would definitely try to stay within the expected move and this is where kind of more advanced strategies kind of set up the play so you could do you could do a straddle or a strangle so a straddle a straddle would be you know for the straddle to work you really need i don't use them a lot but i'm going to show you how to use them here um basically with a straddle you want the stock to go up or down uh, above your above your price so let's say um for a straddle you you buy a call and a put at the same strike so for this example we'll say we'll just use this 150 strike i'll buy one call and then i'll buy one put at the 150s and basically it's going to cost me five dollars 70 cents 570 dollars in total and the reason why to put a, str a straddle on is because you think the stock is going to move a lot and it's going to either go up or down but you're not very sure this way you can profit if it goes above 150 or it goes below 150 uh, right now you know the puts are more expensive because that's currently in the money so you know 
typically I don't I don't tend to trade straddles, but I just wanted to show you this as an example. And Robinhood is good, like I said, for just buying and selling calls and puts, a straddle or a strangle. Some more advanced strategies get a little bit more complicated for Robinhood, and it's also a lot harder to take the trade off. So like for the trades that I'm showing you here are mainly just trade examples of, of trades that you can put on quickly and take off quickly. Because a lot of times you know that in the market you, you need to put a trade on and you need to take it off, and time is of the essence, especially if you're day trading or actively trading a lot of positions so you know so basically for this one for a straddle you you'll want you'll want to go below 150 or above 150 and you'll want it to exceed your price that you paid for 570 so you know basically for for this to go up let's say 570 you'd want it to probably be at like 157 you want it to go to like 156 157 50 to, ex to exceed the 570 price here or to go below you know, to go below, you're not going to need that much. You're, you're going to probably need it to go. So this is only a dollar thirty. You're going to only probably need it to go down, like you know, one like down to one forty seven to be profitable. So you know, this is more, you know, obviously because that's in the money. So you know, we're we're you'd be losing basically you'd be losing this dollar thirty, and it would be coming down here, but the but the put would become more expensive essentially. Um, I typically don't try to trade like this because you ha you put a lot of capital up, but I just want to show it to you really quick. You know, for me, I prefer the strangle because mainly because you can you can skew it bullishly or bearishly. So let's say for Alibaba, let's go to chart here. Um, I have it on the right hand corner. So let's say well, right now it's at 149. Let's just go. Let's see what just see what it closed at. So it closed at like 147. Looked like it ripped up and then got rejected at like 150 area. So what I would do then? Let's say I'm bearish on this right now. I would I would buy a put that's closer to the money and then I would buy a call that's further out. So let's let's just do that real quick. So actually let's buy the put first so you can see. So I would buy the put. I would probably buy you know the if the expected move here was five dollars, so you kinda have to do some math. So you want you want it to be within the expected move. So for, for me, I would probably put on right now it's at like 149. You know, I would probably put on these like 146s, or actually, I would probably not exactly a deal. I would probably put on the 147s, and then for the calls, I would probably put on like the 155s for protection. So, you know, for this trade, I would it's more of a bearish strangle. So I'm laying heavier on the put side than I am the the. Obviously, you can equally weight these if you wanted to, but as you can see, like the 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 calls aren't as expensive as the puts. So. On this example, basically this 155 call really is just for my protection and I really, really want to make money on the 147 put and what I want, like if this trade goes against me, let's say it goes up, like let's say, at, you know, at close, you know, close at 147, but pre-market at 149, let's say it rips above 150, you know, this this was my protection, this 155 call. So what I'd be looking to do here, yes, I was wrong on my 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 bearish strangle, but what I'd be looking to do here is either break lead even or get away with a small loss. like. You know, right now this cost will cost three dollars, and I'd hope that it'd come up close enough to uh, one fifty-five where I can where I can get like two dollars or something for for it. So I'd be losing, I'd be a small loser of like a dollar, but it's better than losing three dollars. So it's it's more of a protection. If you want if you want to tighten that up, you could definitely can. Like you know, obviously it costs you thirty cents more, which for you, you know, depending on what your trade ideas are, it may actually be worth it. So just wanted to show you that real quick. Um, on how to how to do just a quick a quick strangle. This would be more of a bearish bearish strangle, and then you could do it. You could do a bull strangle, or you could just do like very even. Let's say it's let's say the price is one forty nine thirty right now, and you want to be about two dollars away. You would just buy one call, and then one put that's like two dollars away. So that that would still be like the one forty eights, one. 47 so you kind of you kind of have to play with it you know above 150 it gets a little tricky because they're going to the, they're going the two dollar 50 cent wide strikes below 150 you get the dollar wide strike so i definitely you know you definitely have more choices here than on the call side so that's why that's why the the call sides are a little bit more spread out and they may appear cheaper it's just because they're 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 two dollar 50 wide strikes instead of dollar wide strikes on that so you know this would this would be kind of more of an equally equally weighted um strangle where it could go either way what you don't want to have happen is it to just stay at the same price for a long period of time because theta is going to really chop this up you know 
you know, as as we get closer, like right now it's it's Wednesday and this is November 16th, this is Friday, you know, we have three days for this to work out. And let's say it stays at 150 or or 149 or even like goes up to like 151 for this trade, you're gonna be losing, you're gonna be losing money every day because the the chance of it going above is going to uh, and below is going to decrease like this right here this number right here this plus or minus five dollars is then like tomorrow is going to be like three dollars and then friday is going to be like two dollars you know you'll, you'll, you get the idea you know this could obviously change as things happen in the market like you just got to keep an eye on it expected moves change all the time implied volatility change all changes all the time so you just really got to keep an eye on it keep an eye on your positions keep an eye on your portfolio um, and then real quick, I'm just going to show you real quick. This is more of a lot. Some people don't have have this available as is shorting options. You have to be a level three or tier three. I'm not sure what Robin Hood calls it. But basically, the only the only thing that I would recommend on on Robin Hood on shorting options is doing a vertical call spread or a vertical put spread, um, mainly mainly because it's harder for like for Rob for an iron condor and things. It it takes a long time to put together. Yes, you can do it. I have videos on this on the channel that you can do it, but it takes a long time for it to kind of come together. So for me, like what what a vertical call spread is is basically you're 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 selling an option, you're buying an option, you you have a max profit and a max loss and you are it's a, it's a directional trade so if i'm have a vertical call spread it means i'm bearish on the stock if i have a vertical put spread it means i'm bullish on the stock and i'll kind of show you how to construct that right now so a vertical call spread you want to short you want to short what's closer to in the money so for this let's say it's more directional and you could take you could take probabilities and all that aside but you know depending on how much credit you want to get but let's just say for this example i'm going to sell sorry I'm going to sell one that's closer to the money. So I'm going to sell, let's say, this 152.50. And then I'm going to buy one that's further out. Let's just say this um, 157.50. So for this, I'm going to get a total credit of 50 cents, $50. So my max profit is going to be $50. Um, I don't know what my max loss is. They don't show you that on Robinhood. Well, you could do the math though. The max, the math loss is going to be four fifty. So since it's five dollar wide, I'm getting fifty cents credit, and my collateral is five hundred. My 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 max loss is going to be four hundred fifty dollars for this. So that might might be a little bit too much risk for you. Um, so you can kind of play around with you know how you want to do that, and also pick you know also this is not a great example because you're doing like this week. You know normally when you do a call spread, you want to do something that's like ten thirty like. 15 to 30 days out. So I would probably be looking at like November 30th for this and you can get more credit. And let's say I think it's going to be below 150. I will then sell, sell let's say the 152 call and I'll buy the 152 call, 155 call, sorry. Um, I never erased those. And you can see here up and up, you know that you did it right when it says call credit spread. And as you can see, the further out that I am to expiration, the more credit I got, I can get. Like I was only getting 50 cents before, now I'm getting 79 cents for this trade, um, and, it, and it's not as much collateral. So I'm getting I'm getting more money for less risk. So you might want to go to that route. Oops, not 10. And see, my collateral is 250. So my my my, my risk here is probably going to be like one, 130. One, yeah, around 130. So my max loss is gonna be like 130. So Robinhood doesn't do a good chance, uh, a, a good, a good. It doesn't really tell you what your max loss is on there. As, uh, unlike other platforms like Thinkorswim or Tastyworks, they show you what your max profit is and your max loss on this. And basically for this for this strategy right here, you you want it to wear down the option. You're using um, implied volatility and using theta to really uh, wear this down. So even if it stays at 149, if it, even if it stays at 149, you put this position on, it stays at 149, it goes up to 150, comes back down to 148, and days go by and theta just takes over. You know, you start. That's where you start making money. The the idea of a of a vertical call spread or a vertical put spread is for the options to go to zero. So you want them to go down to zero. Right now they're worth two dollars and ninety three cents and two dollars and fourteen cents, and really, really. You want them to go to the zero, and the reason why you put on a vertical put spread—I mean, a vertical call spread, or just a call spread or a put spread in general—the reason why I defined it, you define the risk because you want to. Yes, you can only make so much money, but you can only lose so much money. So you're really defining the risk. Like if you were only selling these naked, you're, if you were only selling calls, you need a lot of capital, and your risk would be undefined. So let's say, you know, if if 
if Alibaba went up to like 160, you'd be you'd be you'd be in big trouble. But if it goes up to 160 with this, you had defined risk on. You know what your risk is going in, and it, it, up to your up to what your portfolio allows, and if you want to do that, you know, that's 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 the beauty of defined risk trades. So, you know, the same thing for I'll go through the the put spread real quick just so you can get an idea. But it's it's the same ideas. You're gonna sell a put closer into the money, and then you're gonna sell you're gonna sell a uh, then you're gonna buy a put. So let's do sell put closer into the money here. So we'll just do this. Let's do the, yeah, we'll do the 630s, um, the 149, 633. So I'm gonna sell a put and then I'm gonna buy one. And this, you know, is, is, is 53 cents. So, you know, obviously the market's not open right now. So the pricing is not, not accurate. And these aren't actual trades that I would do. I just kind of showing you an example of how how you would construct these like so in the end like the best ways i find that make money on trading options on Robinhood is just keeping it very simple so buying a call selling a call buying a put buying a straddle or a strangle or doing these these simple call spreads i wouldn't go anything more advanced than that um, because it's hard to get out and it's hard to track so um you know if this video was of value to you hit the like button if you're not yet a subscriber hit subscribe you know definitely appreciate you Thank you, UVH fam, for checking this out. Really appreciate everybody that's been supporting the channel, supporting me, supporting UVH. You know, let's stay green together. Let's keep pushing.